Invitations to the royal banquet preceding the first assembly of UNO were extended not only to the delegates, but also to many others who had taken a leading part in bringing UNO into being. Mr. Eden, for instance. In these after banquet scenes, you'll probably recognize a number of the guests. Dr. Wellington Koo, I'm sure you know. Mr. Peter Fraser on the right, and Mr. Alexander talking to a Saudi Arabian delegate. Perhaps the most interesting shot was an animated discussion held by the King, his Foreign Secretary, and America's Secretary of State. They were presently joined by the Prime Minister, and I'm only sorry I can't tell you what they were saying. Obviously, the banquet was a most auspicious opening to the hard and difficult work that lay ahead. A royal send-off, so to speak, in the happiest circumstances. The King, on behalf of London and the United Kingdom, bidding the delegates welcome to his capital city. Next day, Central Hall, Westminster, was the place chosen for the meeting of representatives from the 51 United Nations. And naturally enough, the arrival of delegates drew many Londoners to the seat. It would be strange indeed if we did not all have a sense of vital interest, for it may well be true that the world's last chance depends on the wisdom of UNO. Sitting beneath the emblem of the world, an unbiased North Pole view of it, by the way, Senor Zuleta, president of the preparatory committee, was in the chair. In the body of the hall sat groups of men and women. Mrs. Roosevelt is one of the United States delegates, men and women chosen to represent the vast majority of mankind in this new effort to make life safe for the ordinary citizen throughout the globe. In a disillusioned world, some may think such a task impossible, but given goodwill, it is of course not impossible, and the alternative is world destruction. The feature of the opening session was the Prime Minister's address, which he concluded by a summing up certain to be endorsed by the whole country. We who are here gather today in this ancient home of liberty and order, are able to meet together because thousands of brave men and women have suffered and died that we may live. It is for us today, bearing in mind the great sacrifices that have been made, to prove ourselves no less courageous in approaching our great task, no less patient no less self-sacrifice. We must, we will succeed. Something of a sensation was caught over the election of a president. Most people thought that Mr. Spack would be chosen. But Mr. Gromyko had another proposal. The Soviet delegation has come to the conclusion that the most appropriate candidature would be that of the Foreign Minister of Norway, Mr. Lee. With two candidates to choose from, it was decided to hold a secret ballot, here seen being carried out. And the result? Well, this is how it was announced. Ladies and gentlemen, the result of the ballot is as follows. Number of votes cast, 51. 23 votes were cast for Mr. Lee, and 28 votes were cast for Mr. S Monsieur Spark. And I invite him to take his seat as President of the Assembly. That's how the first hurdle was taken, and I expect everyone present realized more forcibly than ever that UNO has many more and far stiffer obstacles to negotiate. After two world wars in the life of one generation, the world tries again. <laughs> <laughs>